All right, everybody. So welcome back to another GIMP tutorial. And previously, I'd gotten a request to make a tutorial on making interchangeable episode numbers and adding your Minecraft character to the thumbnail, etc., etc. So let's go ahead and get started by going to the link in the description below and downloading the Minecraft Skin Viewer. Once you get to the web page, you're going to scroll down and download the Minecraft Skin Viewer. I think it's still in alpha, so it'll be 1.1 alpha. And of course, go through AdFly and wait the 10 seconds patiently, more or less. And once you get those 10 seconds down, you're going to be right clicking and downloading the Minecraft Skin Viewer folder and then opening up. Alright, so once you have your Skin Viewer opened up, you're going to enter your username in the bottom right hand corner and it's going to load up your skin from the database. So now once you have your skin loaded up, you can go to the left hand corner, or column rather, and choose default positions installed with the mod, skin viewer rather, no mods here. So once you have the default position you want, you can hit the play button and it will run a pre-run animation of the character walking. And I'm going to stop it halfway through and then change the limb position slightly to match my taste. The taste I'm going for here is I'm trying to make a running animation or rather a running still shot, not animation. So I'm going to tweak the arms here a bit and kind of put them up at up angles, if you know what I mean. And I'm going to tweak the legs a bit, adjust everything. And once that's all finished, I'm going to ensure that it has a transparency background. You can choose a transparency background by going to the right corner and selecting the small gray box with the circles. Circles? No, no, no. Small squares. It's hard to see from here. So, once you have that, you'll notice that it works by, you'll have the white and gray squares in the background. You can also go to background and then transparency. But anyway, once you have that, you're going to right click the center of the image and go to save image as. Make sure when you're saving it that it saves as a .png, otherwise it won't carry over the transparency. A common mistake is people save it as .jpegs and the white background is prominent. So choose a name, save it. And once you're finished saving it, open up your thumbnail on GIMP and we'll get started from there. Alright, so now once in GIMP, you're going to be selecting the thumbnail you want to use. I'm using my Village Pillage template, which is not a real series, but oh well. So anyway, now we're going to be adding the small numeral at the bottom of the thumbnail to represent the, num the, yeah, the number of the episode. Can't speak today. So I'm going to put a number one. Actually, no, I'm just going to put a one. Wait. Uh, yeah, okay. I'm just going to put a number one, and I'm going to increase the size to around 250 or so. It all depends on how big your thumbnail is. For example, and I'm going to move it over by selecting the move tool, moving the one up. And now if you want, you can go to layer, auto crop layer, but that's entirely personal preference. It doesn't affect the outcome of the image. Now I'm going to center the image by using the center tool. And you do that by deselecting all the other layers by hitting the icon the eye icon and pressing the center to middle button in the middle of the GUI. So now that's centered, we're going to reactivate all the other layers by pressing the eye once again. And there you go. Now I'm going to alpha to selection the layer with the one on it. And I'm going to select a small kind of gradient. So I'm going to be using a light gray and a dark gray for the inside of the ones that will match the Minecraft and the Village Pillage kind of color scheme you have going on. So once those are selected, we're going to make a new layer by hitting the white page button. Let me drag in, there we go. And we're going to select transparency. So once we have a new transparent layer, we're going to use the gradient tool and drag down. And as you can see here, I'm having some technical difficulties because of the fact that my opacity was at 50% and the gradient was only it was not it wasn't full transparency it was set to solid transparent so it needs to be full full opacity and there I'm going to be tweaking it until I get a color that I want which I think that looks fine so I'm gonna leave it right there and now I'm gonna create another layer this is gonna be the shadow behind the one to make it look realistic once again make it transparency and we're going to go to select grow and we're gonna grow it by around three or so Make sure you're still selected 
with the alpha to selection on the one layer otherwise growing will do nothing so now we're going to select a full black color this is going to represent the shadow so now we're going to color the one black but make sure you're doing this on the layer that's the empty one so we're going to move the empty layer below the layer by hitting the green arrow button so now you have a small black outline but we want to blur for a shadow effect so now we're going to be going to filters blur and then Gaussian Blur. Gaussian Blur is a very, very standard blur that kind of, what's the word I'm looking for? It kind of fuzzifies the edges, if that's a word. And we're going to be Gaussian Blurring it around maybe 10 or so. I like 10 because 10 is a pretty standard unit for me. But again, it's entirely up to you. So as you can see there, it's going to be blurring the edges of the one slightly. So it's going to give a shadow effect. So hit OK whenever you're happy with it. And there you go, we have a nice shadow on the one. Now from here you can go farther, and which I'm going to, and alpha to select the layer with the gradient on it, the gray and dark gray. Now we're going to be using the eclipse tool, and make sure that the small deselect whatever selected button is, which is the third icon, and make a small circle around it. Make it cover around half of the one, and then hit enter. That'll cut away some of the alpha to selection so you get a small leftover. Now we're going to be selecting a white color in the gradient tool. And we're going to select the opacity to be around 50%. Now we're going to drag up. But make sure you're on the transparency as I wasn't. Forgot to think again. And make sure you're on the new layer. All the way on top. So transparency. And click and drag up. Or down rather in this case. So there we go, we have a nice little cut effect on the number and that looks very snazzy. So now we're going to import our previous skin which we saved in the Minecraft skin viewer. You have the nice censorship. Super, prof super professional, I know. But once we import the PNG that we were supposed to save it as. There you go, just making sure it's PNG. We are noticed that it's behind the Minecraft and the Village Pillage. So we're going to use the green arrow button again and we're going to move it all the way to the top. So hit it a couple times and you can see that the layer is moving to the top. So once our little character is all the way in front, we're going to be moving him a little bit over. I'm going to put him around the one because I feel like at the bottom it's not so crowded. We don't want him covering up the text of course. So now I'm trying to alpha the selection without the icon going off screen, but I'm just going to throw up attachment here. So you're going to right click the layer and alpha to selection it. There we go. So now we're going to be adding a drop shadow to it just like we did with the one. So once again, make a new layer, select full black. Make sure the layer is set to transparency and fill in the new layer with the black, col the black color. Select none. Very important to select none before Gaussian Blurring it, otherwise the Gaussian Blur won't blur, so to speak. So now we're going to go to Filters, and you can do Reshow Blur, but for all intents and purposes we're going to go to Blur and then Gaussian Blur. So once on Gaussian Blur, we're going to leave it at 10, where it should be already, and we're going to hit the OK button. So there we go, we have a nice small shadow on the effect. Now, OK, so select the Avatar layer. And now we're going to go to Filters, Enhance, and then Unsharpen Mask. This is going to this is going to sharpen the lines on the characters so they don't appear so blurry like they might whenever you import from the skin viewer. So I'm going to affect the ratios, make them very very low, and then I'm going to select OK. Always make sure to save your project as well at this point because in case GIMP freezes like it is here, you might lose a lot of save progress, which will not be fun. So anyway, now we want to have the two layers locked together. So, the two layers being the shadow and the main character. So I'm going to select the chain buttons next to the eye. So because those two chains are showing, that means whenever I move the top layer or the bottom layer, the shadow and the main character layer will move too. So now we're going to move both of these guys, after auto-cropping of course, 
we're going to move both of these shadows and the main character layer underneath the task text after repositioning the character. So now that we're done repositioning, we're going to select the small green arrow at the bottom of the layers tab and we're going to move the layers down below the text layers. So as you see, I'm pressing it down and it's moving down the small layers so that the are underneath the one and the village pillage logo. Make sure that the character layer, the one with the color on it, is always above the black shadow, otherwise you'll just have a black outline. So now as you see here, I'm moving it up a bit so that it's above the village pillage because I decided that it would look better above the village pillage logo. So I'm moving the shadow up. And there we go. So now all we really need to do is I don't like how small the character is, so I'm going to use the resize tool and I'm going to make him a little bit larger so that he fits in well with the rest of the picture. So I'm going to make sure to select him and I'm going to grow him by about that much, so he's a little bit bigger than one. I'm going to move him down again so he's in the bottom left hand corner of the thumbnail. And here I am just adjusting it, small tweaks. And that's about good. Now all we need to do is select the village layer with the photo, go to filters, blur, and then Gaussian blur. Now we're going to use a Gaussian blur of around five or so. I'm not sure how much this will look well, so you just have to kind of play around with it. So once you reach a good blur, we're going to hit OK. And this is to draw away from the big village. And I'm going to repeat the Gaussian blur a couple times. So this is to make the uh, text in the picture more pop out ish. That's a real word and there we go so that's about it so now I'm gonna file and export as a .jpeg or a .png honestly it does not matter alright so thanks for watching and if you enjoyed feel free to leave a comment on a suggestion you want to do next I might be adding a speed art um, short video soon so stay tuned for that and as always thanks again for watching and I'll talk to you guys later